Hey guys, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to another episode of The Trading Edge, your weekly look around the markets. If you guys are brand new, I'm a Forex trader trading coach, one of the co-founders at tier1trading.com, and this is a weekly video that I put out here on YouTube as well as the tier one platform, showing you some of the best opportunities that are on my radar for the week ahead. I also like to think that I leave you with some educational tips that will help push you along the path of becoming a consistently profitable trader as well. Now, if you've been telling yourself or asking yourself the question, man, the markets have, have the markets been a little bit strange? Have they been a little bit rough? Are, uh, is trading still working? Uh, you're not alone. I've been getting a lot of that. I've been having a lot of good conversations with traders of all different levels. I'm talking top traders, those who have been consistently profitable for years. They earn prop firms, they're professionally doing it, as well as newer traders who are either demo trading or just getting into trading live money. And Again, you are not alone out there. Uh, these have been unprecedented times this entire year, to be honest with you, but recently it's been a little bit rougher just with everything that's going on uh, going along in the world. And I remember talking about that last week. The key is um, really the difference in mindset. And a few videos ago, I, I put out some lessons on how should you handle rough times. Um, at the end of the day, you wanna go to your go-to trades. There's a good quote I shared from uh, Mike Bellafiore the other day. I'm gonna go see if I can find it real quick, but it was, uh, it's gonna sum up your approach. You know, when times get rough, you wanna go to your go-to trades, your grade A trades. And the quote said, if I can find it, it says, sit in your trading seat, observe price action, wait for your trade to pounce. And what I mean by that is typically in tough times, traders think they have to do more, right? Whether they have or they're on a losing streak or whatnot, they gotta do something extra to make up for it. Or if the markets are slow, they gotta find something special to have that opportunity because they're acting like they're on some type of quota where I need a certain amount of trades to you know, blah, 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 blah. The truth is the exact opposite. Most of the times when you force trades, when you over trade, when you try to make something happen that isn't there, you're gonna end up hurting yourself even more. We see that a lot with professional athletes as well, whether they're trying to go for the home run and they end up striking out, whether it's a quarterback trying to force a ball in there, um, they take too much of a risk and it gets intercepted. Um, the key is we need to be even more patient, even more conservative than before because there's a lot of junk in the market. There's a lot of sporadic movement. We need to really sit back, be patient, wait for our grade A trade, and then pounce and make sure we take full advantage of the opportunities. And it may not mean a lot of frequency. I only had two trades this past week, one win, one loss, um, but you're not going backwards. And if you think about trading in the, in, in the first place, and this is something that many new traders don't understand, that trading is more, it's, it's less about making as much profit as you can. It's more about risk management and, and, and um, conservation of capital. And, and I know it doesn't, it takes a while, I guess, to, to kind of shift that paradigm. But when you focus on risk management, when you focus on conserving capital, that's going to be the best way for you to make as much money as possible. When you focus on making as much money as possible, that's typically when you're going to blow a lot more money. And I, again, it sounds weird, but trust me, if you spend any amount of time in this game, if you spend any amount of time surrounded by good, high quality traders, um, you know exactly what I mean. And that's the main difference between newer struggling traders and professional traders that are just going through a funk. The newer struggling traders, because they have that drive, I need to make more, they start doing the funky stuff. The mindset that professional traders have and the mindset that I think you guys should take during these times is conservation of capital, how can I keep my head afloat, right? Because an equity curve looks very similar to a trend. I'll draw it out here on a chart real quick, right? The equity curve has two parts, right? We have extensions and ha we have retracements, right? Hopefully it's going in the upward direction, right? But your extensions are gonna look like this. Your retracements are gonna look like that, right? Now, if you notice something, right? Are in a upward trend, in a positive trend, in a positive equity curve, what do you notice here? Well, your extensions are gonna be bigger than your pullback, right? So if we just put this together like this and we take our extension and we take our pullback, so the pullback's gonna be the, the drawdown where we're losing money, the extension's gonna be the area where we're making money. And if we just copy and paste this, right, what do you notice is going to happen? Well, all of a sudden, 
we have a nice upward trending equity curve, right? We're making more when we're doing good. We're losing less when we're doing bad. We're moving in the right direction, creating higher highs and higher lows. Now let's take it back to the trader that tries to force stuff and make too much happen. All of a sudden, instead of taking a natural drawdown or just kind of keeping their head above water and surviving tough times until that next extension comes, all of a sudden they're making this draw down a little bit more. And even if their extension is the same, right? Instead of making those new structure highs, instead of making higher highs in their equity curve, right? You're basically just going sideways. And these are the people that get caught in that boomer buster category um, from Mark Douglas, where you're not bad at trading. You just haven't really done enough to kind of get out of your own consolidation, right? You haven't gotten the ball rolling. You kind of, you're just going sideways. And again, risk management, conservation of capital is a big part of that. If you can just do the same thing you've been doing when your trading is doing well and focus a little bit on managing that risk and even cutting that in half, all of a sudden you're not doing all too much more as far as finding more trades or stuff like that um, to bring your equity curve to new highs. So in periods like this where you know I've been in a funk for the last, what, probably three, four weeks, month or so, I'm just trying to survive. If I can have a break even week, that's fine. If I can have a week where it's a little bit of drawdown, that's fine. If I can have a week where I'm making a little bit of money, boom, that's perfect. As long as I'm not going too far in the opposite direction because this year's already been good, right? The equity curve is always already pointed in the right direction. I know that these things don't last forever. That next extension is going to come. I just have to wait it out and survive until it gets here. And that's one of the biggest differences between professional traders and struggling traders. Pro traders can survive the funk. Uh, struggling traders, they typically don't. But the thing to notice is that we're all going through it. You're not alone. I'm not alone. Most people are going through it. The difference is, is, is how we approach it and how we handle it. So that's today's rant. We're going to get into the charts. I got to do this disclaimer thing uh, just to make sure everything's legally good. While that's scrolling by, do me a favor. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you're brand new, hit that subscribe button. Make sure that little boom, that bell is hit. That way you don't miss my next video. Um, and thank you guys uh, for allowing me to get to episode 400 in the Trading Coach Podcast. It's crazy. I never thought that we'd reach episode 400. I never thought that we'd be consistently ranked as one of the top Forex uh, trading and um, even sliding up there and in investing related uh, podcast as well. So that's pretty cool. Cheers for 400. Hats off for uh, 400 more. So see you guys in a little bit. All right, one of the pairs that I want to start on this week is going to be the pound dollar. And the pound dollar is putting in a head and shoulders bottom. Again, we had this ascending triangle up here um, a few months ago. We put in a nice downward move. This is all Brexit related, by the way. Um, <laughs> and then we put in a right shoulder followed by a shorter extension down, a move back up to what's called uh, the neckline and then a slight left shoulder right here. We're approaching a pretty decent level of consolidation. I'm gonna actually go down to a four hour chart so you guys can see this a little bit clearer, but um, if we take these two VS1 levels, right? So we take this one right here at the neckline and we take actually this inside VS1 level. VS1 levels, these are, are visual representations of support and resistance, something that we use to kind of just understand where higher time frame well i use it for higher time frame you can do it for trading time frame as well but understanding where key levels of structure are at just to help with our analysis and whatnot you can see we don't necessarily have a a clean structure swap and what i mean by that is an area where or an exact line where previous structure support 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 turns to resistance 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 but it's pretty much in the same area and one of the things that you'll notice in trading is that these things are going to act as zones, right? Whether you're using pivot points or Fibonacci's or support and resistance, um, they all act in zones. So it's not just a precise number, it's an area. So you got to do a little bit of interpretation to decide what area it's going to be as far as importance goes. But if we can break out of this level, we have two things happening. One, we're going to validate the head and shoulders pattern, right? And we know that this head and shoulders bottom 
is going to be a, a classic charting pattern for a reversal in trends. We would expect a move upward. We're also going to be able to break past a previous level of support, which is now acting as resistance, which is going to be, it should be a pretty interesting battle point between the bulls and the bears. So if we can push past those highs, if we can violate, excuse me, if we can violate those highs, there's a good chance that we're going to continue up to our previous structure highs around you know, I would say at a minimum uh, $1.33, but honestly, all the way up to, I'd be comfortable shooting all the way up to one thirty four. So a nice little zone here to look for on pound dollar. Again, just to give some reference, we're at about uh, one thirty. If, if we violate that level, we'll probably probably be at about one thirty fifties, right? So you're, you're looking at um, some pretty significant room to the upside. We're talking 300 250 pips now not saying you're going to catch all of that but that's the room for opportunity and that's what we're going to keep our eyes on for the weeks to come so the next pair we're going to keep an eye on is going to be the aussie dollar we're going to take a look at this one the daily uh, this was a a trade last week where we had a double bottom or it's gonna be a double top right inside this zone and we thought we'd see some continuation to the downside and the market gave us an initial push but never continued to test previous structure lows now that we've pushed up, it looks like we could be putting in a complex pullback. But if you're familiar with pattern formations, you're also going to see something else here, right? If we take the starting point um, right before this kind of one, two, three, four, five, six day, this week stretch of, uh, of bearish candles, right? This is going to be our X to A leg, which is going to be the starting point for an advanced pattern formation. And these are pattern formations that typically form when the market's in consolidation. So when the market's not directional and just, you know, putting in higher, high, higher lows, but when it starts to put in kind of a move down, then a halfway move up and another halfway move down and a halfway move up, these uh, pattern formations happen during these areas of consolidation. And um, I like them. I've been trading with them for years. I know the internet will tell you different things. Um, I'm always a big fan of having multiple ways to trade. So pattern formations are help, helping me during consolidative periods. Um, I have more directional type of strategies during trending periods. Uh, to each his own. If you find something that works, if you back test it, go for it. Um, but this, we're going to have a handful of setups here in the market this week. So I got a, a few more to show you. But if we take a look at what we have here, I'm just going to bring up my, my tool, my little cheat tool that makes it easier. Um, I still like to draw them out myself. I don't like it to draw it out for me, but you could, ha you could have the tool do that. We've got an X to A, which is going to be our initial swing high to swing low. An A to B, which is going to come to our 50% retracement. And seeing that we come to our 50% retracement, I know exactly what pattern formation this can be and which it can't be. And again, a little cheat deal tells me that at this point, it could be bat or cipher. We then get another retracement back. Again, this was off that double top um, last week. And you can see that we just broke and closed above the B leg to end the week, which allows me to predict that price is likely to go higher. So if we are likely to go higher, right, we should head up to our previous level of structure, which is the X leg, the start of this pattern formation. That's also going to be where the completion of what's called a bat pattern or a bat formation is going to be at. This D leg is going to be right at the 886 Fibonacci retracement from the X to the A. Uh, the top of the zone is going to be the X leg. This is going to be our completion zone. If price action comes into this level, not only do I think it's a good opportunity for a structure trade, but obviously you're going to have an advanced pattern formation trade here as well. I'm just curious, by the way, not that this makes a difference, but what would an AB equals CD pattern look like here? A one to one measured move right around that level as well so if you're a cts trader you can add even more points to it if you want but keep an eye out here um around 7300 so 73 cent here for the aussie dollar decent looking pattern formation here's what the risk reward is going to look like on the daily time frame right so you're risking about 104 to gain about 114 this is going to be um a little bit smaller if you're on the four hour because it's atr based at least the way i have it set up is atr based so that's going to be a little bit uh smaller you'll probably cut it in half. Um, seeing how the ATR is 65 here. Let me just see uh, 240 what, what this looks like. Now I'm curious. <laughs> now I'm curious what this ATR is gonna look like here. It's gonna be 20, so even even less than that, right? You can see that chops it down to, to 59. So if you're a four hour trader, much better opportunity risk reward wise um, than the daily. One thing just to mention on the daily, uh, we've been talking about this a lot um, about different variations of stop loss and one-to-one -one measure moves and making adjustments um 
when we look at trades, we want to have we want to have three things, right? Entry stops and targets. All three of those need to meet the rules. We often talk about levels of overlapping structure, and overlapping structure looks like this: essentially, when you have one structure level that is right underneath another one. And ideally, right, the higher level of structure, this bad boy up here is going to be the more important one. So you want to have a stop loss at that level. However, that, that won't always fall in line with your rules. And, and here's a good example, right? Although you may want to have a stop loss up here, right? In order to do so, you're risking, uh, in many cases, too much. So sometimes you're going to have to have a stop loss at in a, a position that's not ideal just to meet your risk management rules. And, and that's OK. Not every trade is going to be perfect. Some trades are going to be in areas where it's like, hey, I wish it could be here, but it just can't. And that's just the, the reality of trading. You can always make the choice to adjust. You can always make the choice to just not take the setup and pass on it. Um, but I think many traders come into the markets thinking we're going to get perfection all the time. And uh, trust me, per perfection is is not something that's going to happen often in the market. So you, you, you have to kind of have, you know, not room to adjust. It should be rules based, but you're not always going to be completely satisfied with every aspect of your trade, whether it's your entry, um, your target or your stop loss. Let's head over to New Zealand dollar next thing and we'll run through the rest of these a little bit quickly because um, we're basically looking at the same thing, right? This is essentially identical to Aussie dollar. So I'll just draw it in real quick, mark up my chart so you can see it and we'll move on. X to A, A to B, a little bit shallower of a B leg, B to C, C to D. So we're still looking at that 886 for our D completion. Same little zone. This is gonna be a little bit better than the Aussie dollar, right? As we come back up to that double top, because we do not have those overlapping levels of structure like we did on the Aussie, that is the structure high. You can see there is nothing else near it. So that's gonna be a much more powerful level of structure here on the Kiwi, right? If you notice, right, we just missed here with this, but we almost put in back-to-back -back patterns. And this is, this is what I was talking about, about consolidation. As we consolidate, you get this type of movement. Now this one would have been invalid because of this point right here, but you can see same type of movement would have been a very nice pattern formation. So as the market consolidates, look out for these bad boys. They're hidden in there. But if you know what to look for, um, they could be some very appetizing opportunities. Uh, next, while we're on the pattern train, we're going to head over to Euro Aussie. Same thing, just a little bit inverse Euro Aussie. If you remember this, this was our home run hitter from a few weeks ago. We did retrace back up. Now we're looking for the second extension down. Um, so another bat pattern. That's the theme of the day, I guess. And we'll draw it on so you guys can see. Beautiful anchor leg right here. Swing low to swing high. I guess you can call it maybe a little impulse leg here, but not anchor leg because we never actually uh, had a lower low, lower close. Anyway, X to A, A to B, B to C, C to D. Again, another pattern formation in consolidation. Also another near miss right here if that C leg just being invalidated. And again, Euro Aussie's been in the chop, um, if you've noticed lately. So again, a good place to look for pattern formations. That's going to be here in the daily and on the four hour. Um, let's go to a different pair. Let's go to, actually, let's go to the dollar index. Let's check out the dollar index. Let me bring up uh, my trading view chart. Figured I should do something trading view, view related since I got the trading view hat on today. Um, Dollar index. So we've been talking a lot about the dollar index. Bigger picture here on the daily, right? So we've been looking for a pullback trade. This is very similar to the euro dollar where we had this period of consolidation. Do, 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 little nasty head and shoulders type of action. We broke and closed above, right? We came to our inside level of structure. If, if you've been with us every week, right? You know exactly what we're talking about. Just a little bit of recap for those who are new. And now we're retracing back down. And what we've been looking for for the past few weeks now has been a pullback trade, a pullback and a chance to extend higher. Now, you can see that we are taking our good old time and that's how the markets have been. There's been very lazy markets with a few uh, sporadic moves thanks to certain news events and tweets and whatnot that have come out. Um, but nothing overall has really changed in the analysis. A level that looks appetizing for me following up on this same idea is going to be this level right here, the right shoulder, if you may. And I'll make this a more appealing color to you guys. 
The right shoulder is going to be a decent level of structure. This is essentially our, our most powerful level of structure before, obviously, the head down here at the bottom. And you can just take, you can you can tell that for you guys that went through the foundation course. Just look at the candlestick action that happened down there, right? Look at the wicks, look at the wicks, look at the reaction, and then finally look at the breakout. This was a very important level for the buyers before. Um, if we're going to see some buying pressure in this market, this should be a level that they're interested in. They should want to protect this level. If they don't, it's going to be a pretty obvious failure and the, and the sellers are going to win out. Um, but if the buyers are interested, this should be the level where they take advantage um, and vice versa. If you're a counter trend trader, you're probably if you're a seller up here as a counter trend trader, you're looking to buy some profits or buy and take some profits at this level as well. So keep an eye as price action comes to this level for buying opportunities, right? Um, right up above, what are we at here? 92.70. So we're close right there. Right now, we may have some Fibonacci love down there. I think we're going to have a just eyeballing it, a 127 and a 1618 kind of cluster. 127, if we into an inversion here, Fibonacci extension inside to outside. 127, plus 6 and 8 cluster. Yeah. So anywhere in this zone um, will be a decent level to look for buying opportunities here on the dollar index. Let's go to the NAS 100 next. Um, this is another one where we got a, a pretty decent uh, longer term projection here. Again, let's um, we can look at the, the daily and then we're gonna look at the four hour after that. So you can see same type of pattern we looked at on the dollar index, same type of pattern we looked at on the pound dollar, this little head and shoulders type deal. And again, this is just a classic reversal pattern. This is a pattern that you see in the market from decades and decades and decades of basically a directional move coming to an end and a potential reversal. And when I see this, um, obviously I'm expecting a move higher, but the question I'm gonna ask myself is if we move higher, where are we likely to move higher to? And this is our next level of structure right up here in this zone. Now, if we go down to the four hour, right? We're not in the clear yet. We need to violate this little inside level of structure right here. This is the area I wanna see violated. I'm not honestly satisfied with a break above the neckline because we have this overlapping level of structure, right? I just told you how powerful they are. But if we can violate this level, this upper green line, and get kind of out of this trap zone, um, I do expect a move higher. So again, something that's not on the table right now, but certainly something that we're gonna be watching, keeping our eye on for future buying opportunities. Lastly, question mark? Oh, or was that it? I think that was it. Okay, yeah, that's it. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me this week. As always, before you head out, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new, if you have any questions or comments about anything in this video, or maybe just want to share your ideas or whatnot, you can do it in the comment section below. Um, I will see you guys on, well, Tier 1 members, I'll see you guys on Monday on the Q&A. We've got a very good question about risk-reward ratios when using multiple targets. For the rest of you guys, I'll see you Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with new episodes of the Trading Coach Podcast. And of course, I'll see you next week with another episode of The Trading Edge. Take care.